Hello, welcome to BioGrid TV. If you're new here, please subscribe and turn on the notification so you don't miss our next video. Biography of Hassan Gulet Aptidon. Firsts are usually celebrated. Families cherish their firstborns. People tend to remember fondly their first achievements, and nations never forget their first rulers, especially when they serve them well. For Djibouti, the man who had the honor of being the first prime minister and first president was none other than Hassan Gulet Aptidon. Born on the 15th of October 1916, if place of birth determined greatness, surely Hassan Gulet would have never attained it. Having been born in the small and remote village of Garissa in the Lugaya district in then Somaliland, Although the sub-clan he was born into was a politically powerful one, the Mamasan sub-clan of the Isa clan, he would go on to play a very crucial role during the period his nation struggled to gain independence from France and in the nation's post-independence era. Hassan Goulet's leadership qualities were very visible to the electorate when he contested against an equally influential politician in the person of Mahmoud Harbi Farah. While Mahmoud Harbi wanted the territory to become part of neighboring Somalia, which was about to become independent, Hassan Goulet rallied for Djibouti to remain with France. Hassan Goulet's faction would go on to win the referendum. He then became the vice president of the government council from 1958 to April 1959, having also served in the French Senate from 1952 to 1958, as well as the French National Assembly from 1959 to 1962. He held several other top positions, including Minister for Education, Minister of the Interior, and was the first Prime Minister of Djibouti from May to July 1977. When Djibouti became a republic, he became the first president of the nation. The taste of power is so sweet that many leaders do all they can to never lose it. Hassan Gouled was no exception. In 1981, he declared his party, the People's Rally for Progress RPP, as the sole legal political party in Djibouti effectively stopping any strong political opposition. It was therefore a simple walk in the park for him when elections held in June that year. He had no opposition and was elected for another six-year term. But as it's always the case, opposition always somehow spring up when only one individual runs the show and seeks to control everything. So in 1991, with Hassan Goulet still in power, civil war broke out in Djibouti as the discontent in how the country was being run grew bigger. This forced him to agree to some constitutional reforms and four political parties were given the permission to participate in the parliamentary elections which held in December 1992. But at the end, only two parties went on to contest and Hassan Goulet's RPP carried the day, winning all 65 available seats. He also got re-elected the following year for a fourth presidential term. By this time, age had really caught up with him and he was not as strong as he used to be to actively steer the affairs of the nation. That period, the country's economy drastically took a bad shape the nation was also experiencing a social problem at the time with a large portion of the population excessively consuming an addictive drug called cuts, which had an effect of sapping energy of its users. Even the World Bank cited this addiction as a major factor in the nation's poor economic state. With so much problems to tackle but little strength to work, Hassan Goulet's nephew, Ismail Omar Gwili stepped in unofficially to handle the affairs of the state. It was therefore no surprise when towards the next presidential elections in 1999, Hassan Goulet announced he wouldn't be contesting 
and the RPP endorsed his nephew to take his place. When the elections held in April, Ismail Omar Gwile emerged winner and succeeded his uncle. Having retired to his home after a remarkable political career, Hassan Gule died peacefully on the 21st of November 2006. He was 90 years old by the time of his death. Hassan Gulet was married twice. His first wife, First Lady Aicha Bogore, died in 2001, after which he married a second wife. Hassan Gulet's legacies live on in Djibouti, with a number of public structures named after him, like the El Hajj Hassan Gulet Aptidon Stadium. Also in 2015, President Ismail Omar Gwile laid the foundation for a new international airport in Ali Sabie, Djibouti's second largest city. The airport is named Hassan Gule International Airport. He was also a recipient of a foreign honor from Malaysia in 1998, honorary recipient of the Order of the Crown of the Realm. What have we missed out of this biography of Aptidan? Let's know in the comment section. Will it be ridiculous to subscribe to our channel? If no, please like this video, share and subscribe to our channel.